Hello, can you hear me now? Hello. Can you hear me? Hi, everybody. I can't hear you, Colleen, still. I'm so sorry. I don't know what's going on. Ah. But I'm Melissa from Pets on Cue, and I'm super excited to be here today. Um, Colleen's calling me on the phone. <laughs> Hello. You have to put me on speaker. Okay, you're on speaker. <laughs> Hi guys. So my audio apparently isn't working, but I'm going to probably just be asking Melissa questions in the text and letting her take this whole thing. But if my audio isn't working, we'll just have to try it another way. Does it work? I mean, I can hear you. On here? Or on here? On here. <laughs> my phone. I don't know what's going on. You oh, can Mary text says she can hear me. Oh, I, I just can't hear you. So that's fun. This is a great way to start a webinar. It's a great way to start and asking questions. Um, you know, let me try. Okay. They can hear me, Mel. Take my AirPods out, maybe. Maybe if I'm just on a regular whatever. Can you still hear me? <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Oh, Mel no. can't hear me. Um, but... No, I can hear you. Can oh, you hear me? great. I'm sorry that this is how we're starting everything, but I wanted everyone to, like... <laughs> really get to know Melissa and that she's such an expert in this industry. And I'm sorry that that's how this all started. Um, sorry. <laughs> but Melissa and I have been working with animal talent together for years now. It's been over five years that we've kind of been this dynamic duo. She's also my best friend. Um, and I don't think I could say nicer things about her. And Mel, I'll let you um, take it. I have a contractor at my front door, like staring that's at no me right way. now. Um, I'm really excited to be here today. Uh, I met Colleen years ago, uh, about 2016, I guess it was, when we worked together in finance. And, you know, I retired from that career to come and work for her and work for Pets on Q and learn everything I could about this industry and about working with animals. And, you know, it's been a, a crazy ride. Um, it's been really fun. But, you know, today we really wanted to focus on working with animals and how we work with animals and what kind of sets us apart and things that you guys need to look out for as creators, influencers, artists, what have you um, in this industry and why we're here to kind of protect you and kind of the services that we offer. So um, I'm really excited to kind of dive in. Um, I've been Colleen's right hand woman for a while. Um, hopefully you've seen <laughs> us on Pet Stars. We have a great time together um, and we still work together every single day. So um, we're having a, a great time um, figuring this out as we go. <laughs> One of the most common questions that I get is like, is Melissa really your friend? Like this girl was like, <laughs> I get asked person. that too. People always want to know if we're really friends and if I really have a lizard and if you really have a dog, that's a deaf Dalmatian. And the answer is yes to everything. Um, and the fish from the show is still alive and lives right here, if you can yep. see. Um, but anywho, yeah, so I, I missed part of what you said in the beginning, I'm sure all great things, um, that we've worked in production with animals. We work with a lot of animal actors. We work with a lot of animal influencers. I mean, we have rosters of thousands of animals in there um, and content creators. And so how Mel and I work together really well, I do the sales up front because every, every person, like you're good at some things and you're bad at others. And what I'm terrible at, Melissa is a wizard. Um, so managing campaigns, legal contracts, she is the person to ask all the questions. So um, that's why I really wanted to have you guys all meet her. And this is like, what's your favorite part about Pet Stars? I didn't put this question in here. Oh. Just, you know. <laughs> Getting to hang out with my best friend on set every day was amazing. We had right. such a good time. Um, all of our laughs on set were genuine. Like we became really good friends with our cast or our crew rather. Um, and just, you know, everybody that we got to meet and just hanging out with Colleen all day was so much fun. Melissa almost burnt down a hotel. Let me put it that way. That I didn't burn down the hotel. It was the people below me. I know, I know, my room I know. almost burned. They had like a bad, <laughs> they had like a bad charger from another country and we had to evacuate the hotel and their room was right below mine and I totally almost died. So no, I almost died while we were filming. It was a fun <laughs> situation. But it wasn't um, my fault. So if so, if you guys know, Melissa manages a lot of the campaign. So if we're doing a major campaign with a brand and all that, she manages the campaign from um, like once the contract's there to the very end. So she does the majority of work um, on each campaign. So Mel, what tips do you have to run a successful campaign? Number one, I think for anybody that's doing this, if you're if you're trying to do this and make any bit of money or 
or do a good job at it. You have to treat it like a job. Even if it's not your full-time job and your full focus, you still have to be professional and treat it like a job. That's number one. Number two, organization is key. I'm very organized. I'm going to be emailing you and talking about calendars and dates, but I can only do so much. So you being organized on the other side is incredibly helpful. Um, if there are things that come up because life happens, we have kids and spouses and jobs and all these other things and pets don't always cooperate. We get it. Let me know ahead of time. If you have travel plans, if you're leaving the country, if you know, your kid is sick and you can't hit the deadline or what have you, please let me know as soon as you know, so that I can communicate on your behalf and get things ironed out with the brand. That's really my job. A lot of the time is to facilitate proper communication to make sure everybody's happy. And I'm really good at that, but I can only do so much. Again, I can only work with what you're giving me. So please do not worry about bothering me. Email me, you know, message me through the platform, whatever, whatever you need to do to get in touch with me. I'm usually very responsive. Um, so communication is key. And, and, you know, the more we can communicate, the better the content is. And then we can, you know, get it, get it done, get it in, get paid and on to the next one. Yeah. And what about for the brand side of things? What, what are tips to manage a successful campaigns for brands? Because We're focusing a lot on influencers here. And I know that there are some brands in this. Certainly. Um, but... From a brand perspective, I think the main thing is to know what your call to action is and really what, what are we doing with this campaign? Is it to, you know, raise awareness about like brand awareness? Is it your to, goals? Right. I'm sorry. Your goals, their exactly. goals. Exactly. Your mm -hmm. goals. What are we trying to do? Because that's going to change the messaging. And if a brand comes in and doesn't really know what they want to do, we're happy to help strategize and happy to help all that. But if you're hiring influencers and we're to the point where we're executing contracts, the brand at that point should know what their creative is. What are they looking for? You know, do they want reels? Do they want static images? What do they want? Because I we can't decide that. So that's really up to the brand to really know. Mm -hmm. Help with strategy. But ultimately, the brand has to know what they're looking for. Yeah, we have a lot with strategy. I do a lot of the front end and like the um, whatever your goals are would definitely change what type of campaign we would recommend with different influencers. So it's like if you're looking for brand awareness and you want to target micro influencers and what the type of micro influencers that matches your brand strategy, then we have this entire amazing team of animal talent that will do things. And honestly, Mel is amazing at just keeping everything on a campaign organized. And we actually attempted to clone her within our platform um, and the step-by-step -step process that she does things and how she emails people. And those that's when emails trigger within our platform. So she can help teach you how to do that as well and just manage the campaigns on your own to save you, you know, some money there. Um, yeah. So let me go on to the next question because we spent a lot of time there. Um, what type of legalities are in contracts in the influencer industry. I'm rewording that a little bit because I do I mean, want to focus on brands and influencers. Right. I mean, there's really all kinds of legalities and, and that's why it's important to have, you know, awareness about what it is that you're getting into for both sides. Um, we always want to have a contract or some kind of agreement that stipulates what is the content being requested? What is the payment for that content? Who owns the content or what are the rights involved? Is there exclusivity? Will there be whitelisting? What are the timelines and dates? All those things should be outlined in the contract so that we are all on the same page. There's really, you know, plenty of, of, of ways that we can communicate and if we need to move some dates or change content, that can happen, but we need to make sure we all are on the same page. And so in terms of, you know, who owns the rights, how it's going out and for how long, how long it has to stay on your page, how many rounds of revisions are there? All of those things should be spelled out because I, what I don't want to have happen is an influencer turn in content and think they're done and have a brand come back with a bunch of revisions and then the influencer gets upset and then the brand gets up like... We're trying to lessen all that. My job is to, again, yeah. hopefully facilitate nice communication between everybody and make sure everybody Let's understands. Ask all the questions. That's what you do really well, is that you ask all the questions to both parties to make sure that everyone fully understands what we exactly. need to do. And that's where like, we don't have, like anytime we have a problem, it's because it, it's around communication and the, the brand assumes one thing, the influencer assumes another, and the communication is something different. Um, exactly. This is a question. What if a brand is not sure about what campaign they like to do? Um, well, that's I why we have strategy one. calls. You know, we have so many yeah. options. Colleen is great at showing brands, you know, what we can do, and what our influencers can do. And we have so many influencers to potentially look at. Um, we are happy to sit down and help with strategy. But again, as I was mentioning previously, 
once you're to the point where you want to hire an influencer, we should have an idea. And if you don't, then we need to probably go back and strategize a little bit more. Um, mm -hmm. And then we can get in there and, you know, start moving forward. It's all about figuring out, you know, what your final, what, what do you want out of this? What are your goals? Yeah. And that happens a lot with different mm -hmm. brands. I would say that we, they have a different idea of what they want to go in with it, but their goals and what their idea is, they don't match. And then it's part of our job is to explain, you know, how that can work. Um, what is the typical length of a campaign? I just saw that question come in. Um, I think and this, there's also can. questions in the community coming in and that's on coming up as pets on cue, just so you know, they're, they're asking on that. Um, okay. It's like four to six weeks, typical. I would say a month is a good time frame, especially if a brand is sending product to an influencer. So there's time to select product, have it shipped, receive it. And also these are animals that we're dealing with, not people. So sometimes they don't, you know, they don't cooperate all the time. And so we have to give the animals plenty of time to acclimate and, you know, perform. And so again, if we can get, you know, four to six weeks, that's great. Um, we have had campaigns that come together really fast, you know, that's on a rush. And we have to take all that into consideration when we're working out pricing and negotiations. Yeah, I have another question that came in. Um, Colleen Becker, love the name. How do I come become more involved with Pets on Cue? I've applied for a few, but don't get any feedback. Mm. Um, I love this question. Uh, so this is typically what happens in a campaign is that let's say we the brand's looking to hire four influencers and we send this out and they're trying to find the perfect four and narrow it down. And let's say you have a Basenji like the dog that's in this photo and they're looking for fluffy dogs. They're looking for the Samoyeds, golden retrievers, whatnot, but they typically don't say that up front. And then they don't pick you because that's just the way that some brands are very, very picky. I mean, we're working on one right now that we had over 100 influencers apply and they literally only liked five of them. And out of that five, they're only picking a few of them. You know, they, they like maybes for, you know, 25 out of them and they can be really picky around it. So it's about finding a brand that matches your niche and that you more more likely than not that you match their niche right. and that you're priced accordingly. I think the two things that will stop you from getting a brand is that you're not priced properly. Um, you're overpriced or even underpriced and too cheap or that um, you're just not like, I mean, if you have a dog and you're trying to get a kitty litter campaign, like we do have people that have dog accounts that try to apply for cat campaigns. And it just isn't a fit or the brand very specifically wants a multi-animal household and you clearly only show one animal on your page. Brand's not going to pick you. Um, we just have this platform and network that brands can see you and they can see your analytics and they can go in and make the proper decision. And if they're not rejecting you or not clicking decline, they might be holding you for their next campaign. Cause sometimes we can have a hundred. It takes a long time. I've had brands take months and months you yeah. know, to actually make selections. So yeah. you just don't know. Um, there are a lot of people that apply that don't get picked. I mean, that's kind of the nature of, of just entertainment in general. If you think about mm -hmm. this in terms of like, if you were auditioning for a commercial, you know, a hundred people audition, they only pick one or two that's kind of what this is like. And, and that is the excitement of it. And also kind of one of the unfortunate things about it. So what I would say is, you know, keep trying, keep applying. Um, if you want to, you know, consult, you know, we're happy to do that as well and see what we can do to, to help you, you know, get a little bit more attention. Um, but it's just one of those things where we will put in our castings, all the information we have, you know, we only again, have what the brand gives us. So they're going to tell us what they're comfortable telling us. And that's what we're going to put in the casting. Um, and so hopefully it's, you know, enough to go by, but sometimes, you know, they don't tell everything. And so we're just kind of sending them a lot of applicants that maybe aren't necessarily what they're looking for, but it's good. But they to don't know what they want until they see it, until they see your page. Um, right. and then, I mean, I, I want to jump into contracts, but can you suggest a pricing strategy? We have an entire video on pricing and we're going to do another live on that. Um, it's different between YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, all very different pricing strategy. As a pet influencer, it's different than a human influencer. It's about 34% less. I can dive into that, but that that's a really long answer. I would say to be flexible. As, as a bottom line, I would say to be flexible and maybe have a range, have a price range that you're willing to do for like, this is what my real costs, this is what a TikTok costs, and be willing to negotiate because a lot of brands you know, maybe have a little bit less budget right now or what have you. And so it's just about who's willing to play ball and, and be willing to, you know, negotiate a little bit sometimes. 
Okay. Then she said it should not have a declined response. Should it be? If if it shows declined in the actual campaign. So the campaigns, they might just like take the campaign down and then you won't see it anymore. And then that's a decline when they remove it, but they can still see all the applicants and add you to their next campaign. So if you haven't seen a decline, that might mean that they want to work with you on their next campaign. They just might've run out of budget. They might have, you know, there's so many things that happen. I mean, we just booked a campaign for an influencer that it was sitting there for over two months. You know, and and that happened this week and they're posting content in a month from now. So these things can just take time. Mm -hmm. uh, don't worry. If, if it does show up as decline, it's just that your pet wasn't right for them. And that's fine. Or it could be your price is too high. Or it could be, it could be a variety of things. Um, I'm the one that usually talks to them. So if you want to, you know, send me your account, I can look into it. Um, Mel, what are the importance of contracts? Did we do this one? And I've just been I, mean, I kind of touched on that before, but I think anytime there is a contract, you know, it's important to read it. I, I feel as though a lot of people don't really read the contracts. They just kind of sign them. Um, and I would really strongly advise any contract or any official paperwork you're sent from a brand, from PetsQ, yeah. from anybody, please read it. If you have questions, well, ask about them. <laughs> Melissa, you make it hard because you read the entire contract and you break down exactly where people need to be paying attention to, exactly what they need to be looking at, exactly what things mean, because you've just been asked so many times on those things. Right. Melissa makes this process so easy for everyone and she makes me look so good. Um, I, this is, I, this is why um, I have it on it. Um, but I would say anytime you're doing anything for a monetary compensation, you want official paperwork or something. That's why we have terms and conditions in our platform. That's, you know, just for everybody's again, just brands also need to protect themselves with contracts. A thousand percent. Everybody. Right. Exclusivity. Um, mm -hmm. The thing is that a lot of influencers think brands screw them over um, sometimes. And then it's like, more likely than not, it's actually more influencers that are screwing over brands than brands screwing over influencers. Brands have to adhere to contracts. They do for the most part. I've never had a brand not pay. I mean, we've been, how long has this been that we've been doing it? Like long nine time. years, almost 10 years. We've never had an issue that big with a brand. I mean, minor. Sometimes like they do take a while to pay, but we've never had anybody just not pay. So mm -hmm. we're always trying to get them to pay just yeah um but more likely than not it's actually the influencers that will be really unprofessional to the brands um that gives other influencers that are trying to make this professional job a bad name so i would say like that's the that's the mm -hmm. key thing there i mean going back to being positive melissa how do you work with animal talent i feel like we've this should have probably been the first question okay, <laughs> i so love working with animal <laughs> talent um once somebody is you know solidified and on a campaign um, typically, I'm going to reach out um, if we're working together and just go over the timeline, go over the creative, and then just make sure that whomever's on the campaign from the brand side and the talent side knows, you know, that I'm always available to facilitate any questions or, you know, to go over content or what have you. Um, I love organization and I like being ahead of the game. So if content's due on Monday, I would love to get it on Friday. You know, I get that that can't always happen, but anytime we can be ahead of the game to look at things and see where they're at beforehand without you know getting down to the wire is is the way that i prefer to work um and then again i can only do so much so on both the brand side and the influencer side being involved and aware of your own calendar and your own timeline ahead of time is key and making mm -hmm. sure that we're communicating questions that we have if you have questions about the copy if you have questions about which hashtags to use or yeah. anything like that I'm, I'm here to facilitate all of those questions. Do not hesitate to reach out to me. I'm, yeah. I'm pretty I would say if you really want to book a campaign, you want to get on Melissa's good side. If you're on Melissa's good side, no, no. And there's Everybody's not like, on my good side. I like everyone's it. on your good side. I know, <laughs> but like really get on her good side. Cause she is the reason that some people will get his brands will come back to her and say like, Hey Mel, like you're great. Who did you like working with? Like, it's who do you want to work with again? Like, um, we have, you know, like Kobe the cat on this team that is super professional and mm -hmm. she is just amazing. And whenever cat accounts come to Mel and that brands that have worked with us for a while or marketing companies, they'll, they'll contact her and say, who's your best cat? She's going to send right back and say, Kobe the cat yeah. like, every single time um, because she just makes Mel's job easier and she has become friends with her. Um, that's just like, if you want a hint, <laughs> brands love them. You know? I would say, so. you know, again, just communication and treat it like a job. It doesn't have to be your only job, but, but respect it. 
give it some precedence, give it some time, give it some focus, treat it like a job. Communication is key. Stuff happens. Things come up. I get it. We all live lives. I understand. And the mm -hmm. brands typically understand, but the more you communicate and let me know ahead of time, the better. Yeah. Um, I feel like we've done this. What terms are vital? We've to look kind of done this already, but again, I'll reiterate, you know, what is that? What are they asking you for? What is the actual scope of work? Because many times, you know, we will talk about, you know, one reel, one post, this is that, but then you get the contract and maybe there's something different in there, whether it's because of a typo or what have you, um, the amount of money that you're getting paid, um, the timeline exclusivity is big. And then any kind of whitelisting, I think those would be the main one. And then of course, or usage, usage, yeah, rights. usage rights. Yeah. Usage rights. yeah. Mm -hmm. Those are the main ones. You just listed like 15 things. Just Sorry. <laughs> There's a lot of things, but that's why I'm here to go over it with you. And like, we can go back and forth and, you know, certain influencers have things that they want taken out, put back in and that's fine. And that's part of what my job is, you know? Yeah. Um, so now we are open to ask questions. So if you are a brand and want to know how to work with influencers, if you're an influencer and want us to, you know, look at your page or any of that, I mean, Mel is the guru when it comes to this. And I also wanted to chat, you know, production and some of the stuff we have coming up. Melissa is, um, we've been, you know, I mean, anything legal, I kind of, I would say a couple of things too, that I wanted to point out learn how to pull analytics. I know for some of you that might seem like a no brainer, but for many people, especially when they're starting out, they don't have any idea how to pull analytics from TikTok or how to pull analytics from Instagram. And that's something that brands almost always ask for, even if we're using the branded content tools. So know how to pull analytics. Um, that's kind of a big deal. I know that's silly, but like, that's something that I have to explain to people a lot, which I don't mind explaining, but it, it would be helpful if you knew that going in. That's a good, good point. Um, how many animals does a brand typically book for a campaign? Depends on the campaign, depends on how long it is. I would say mm -hmm. um, typical brands are booking between say? like five to 10 ish on a campaign. Other brands come in and they say like, I want to work with one influencer or they have a specific budget and they want to hit a certain audience reach and they want micro influencers. And we've done campaigns, you know, with 50 plus influencers in them. So, um, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm reading. I'm reading the next question. I'm jumping ahead every single time. No, wait. I'm clicking the wrong. One. Sorry. Text box in the application. Typically, the text box in the, in the application part is where the brands are getting your creative brief, or if you have any ideas on the campaign. So, like, typically, in I mean, if you do, you have a specific campaign you're talking about. I um, think it's like the awesome. notes, right? Yeah, it's kind of like the notes where it's like, I mean, we just did. I mean, I, we just did a video call with Quickshine, and in their brief, they're saying what type of spin mop do you have that as a dispenser to make sure that our product is usable with this? Because you're promoting not only my product, another product that could be a partner with them. So those notes, that note section, I'm sorry, I keep freezing. Great. Um, that note on a super great face, that note section is where you can put your creative brief, where you can put your ideas, where you can put concepts, where, cause you're trying to like wow them with something that you have. Like, exactly. oh, I've used this product for years and typically brands tend to love if you are a client of theirs already. I love that. Anything that's yes. genuine and, and anything that will set you apart. For instance, you know, I just did a campaign with Brightkins and they specifically wanted people with small children that they were okay showing in their content and, and or puppies. <laughs> So people in the notes were putting, you know, I have a toddler, I have a puppy, I have a this, I have a that, and explaining, you know, what they had that made them match that casting and set them apart and how they were perfect for it. And so those notes, when we get them, we absolutely send them to the brand. Okay. Oh, lost Colleen. Um, tips for pet influencers looking to create long-term brand partnerships. Nope. Well, of course, oh, there you are. I'm here, I'm frozen, but I'm here, guys. So yeah. Um, <laughs> It's great. Um, influencers looking to create long-term brand partnerships. The long-term brand partnerships have been, oh, sorry, Mel, you go. No, I was just going to say consistency, you know, and then really, again, professionalism and willingness to go, you know, above and beyond if, if needed to, like maybe sometimes they want the content like a little bit early or they'll want you to revise, you know, the caption, um, things like that. Also, when you turn in content for review, this is another thing I wanted to mention before. When you're turning in content, whether it's video content or still photo content, 
please always turn in a proposed caption as well. And that caption should have, you know, the verbiage that you want to say plus tags and hashtags. I can't tell you how many times I have to go back to people after they turn in content and go, hey, where's your caption? Where's your caption? So just remember that. Um, but anyway, getting back to long-term partnerships, brands love influencers that perform well. That's the bottom line. So if you create engaging content and have a wonderful fan base that's authentic and engaged, that's going to set you apart. And that's what brands are looking for. So, so long-term partnerships are no different, but professionalism is key. Should we still apply a post is um, past the deadline and is still on the site? Um, yeah, because a lot of times brands either are going to pick it up again and they haven't taken the campaign down, or if it's something that you really want to do, yes. Um, if it's past the deadline, they may have made some selections, but just not taken the campaign down. And mm -hmm. if it's not something you really want, I would probably pass on that because they might just be looking for people on their next campaign. Um, like we do have a few up there for like music collabs because we pretty consistently get music collabs in. So it's always good to kind of go back and show them here are influencers that like music mm -hmm. collabs and um, might be past the deadline, but like it's just good for us to have your pricing and have it right in front of us. Sorry, Mel, you go. No, I, I I have nothing to add to that. You hit everything on the net. Oh. <laughs> yeah, okay. um, can you help me with pitching and working with a brand? Um, yeah, we can. You, we can also have a lot of resources in our community and working on building that out this year. So you, we should basically be having that in there as well. You know, very soon. So well, we have stuff in there now, but we we always are adding to it. Okay. I feel like that that was a great 30 minutes. Am I still frozen for you? Do you You're still, still frozen? It's a great oh. face, too. It's I a great like... face. It <laughs> it's a good picture of it. <laughs> Hold on, I think you would do it. <laughs> I'll sex with you. Um, I think ultimately at the end of the day, you know, we're here to facilitate more opportunities for you. And we want brands to pick you. We want it to go well. We want everybody to get paid. That's what we want. Um how important is it to also have TikTok? I, I think everybody needs to be having TikTok now. I think that if you don't, you're going to get left behind. Um, Instagram is still where all, everything is reposted. If it goes viral anywhere, it's reposted onto Instagram 100%. And there are more dollars spent on Instagram right now. But TikTok is where the virality is. And TikTok is, we're getting a lot more brands that are asking for it. So yeah. I think you're doing yourself a disservice if you don't also have a TikTok. Yeah, I would say go into, we just are, actually, I don't think we posted it yet. I filmed a video basically going over what was happening in the influencer industry for this year. And I go through Instagram and TikTok and what the overall spend is for those communities. Instagram is by far the largest. So if you're spending time with one, it should, it should be Instagram over right. TikTok. TikTok also has a lower ROI. Mm -hmm. um, meaning that the price point for it is a percentage of what you get on yeah, Instagram. It's a lot lower pricing yeah. over there, but yeah. it still doesn't hurt. You know, most of your reels can be pretty much reposted right over there. I mean, it's, it's really not difficult with, with very minimal changes. So I would say just get in the habit of posting on both, uh, you know, yeah. if, if you can, um, it's a different audience on TikTok, you know, so you'll have to kind of find your stride and Colleen's correct on Instagram. If you're going to pick one or the other Instagram is where it's at, but I, I would I still TikTok nurture that TikTok too. audience. Yeah, yeah, Mel's right on that one. Um, so Mel, if someone had a brand and they want to get help with this entire campaign, should they reach out to us? Oh, absolutely. I mean, we can absolutely help facilitate from beginning to end. And what's really great too is let's say you send over a campaign and, and you're not a fit for it. Maybe you have exclusivity with another pet food brand, but this pet food brand reached out to you and they want to work with you, but you can't because you have exclusivity. We can then take that lead. And if we have other animals that are booked on it, we pay you a referral fee based on those other animals that get booked. So that's another way to make money on campaigns if you can't do it, or if you get booked on it and then additionally still book, we are able to book other talent, you can get a referral fee. So um, we also, you know, can just kind of help facilitate the whole process and make it very professional. Part of coming up as an artist, a creator, an influencer, what have you, and, and gaining the validity of somebody who is now treating this like a job and getting paid to do these things, not just as a hobby, is building your team. 
And we're a big part of that. So, so that's a big part of almost like when you're an actor and you get an agent, right? It's that same kind of thing. It just takes you to a different level, adds a level of authenticity and validity to you as that artist, creator, performer, influencer, what have you. And so I think it's important um, to know that. And then absolutely, we're here to help. You know, we want, we want your success. Your success is, is what we're here for. Yeah. Oh, Mel, you said that so well. You are just so much better at this than me. Um, <laughs> Stop. Yeah, no, I mean, at least at least your video doesn't look like this. So <laughs> it's fine. No, I think um, that's great, honey. This is that's the call. That's my love. That's the call that I know. <laughs> um, well, if anyone has any other questions, shoot them in. I think we'll like we'll wrap this one up. But there were so many questions in here. I so appreciate you all being here. Melissa, especially you doing this with me this week. I love doing these lives. If you want more lives with Melissa, please let me know because I will happily do them. Um, this, she yeah, no, this is really fun for us to do. And, you know, any questions you have, you know, we're here to help. And I think at the end of the day, if you're creating good content and you are staying true to yourself and true to your audience, you know, brands will take notice. Keep applying. Don't get frustrated. It's just one of those things. It's not always going to be a fit. And that's okay. You know, the right things will come along and you will be a fit for the right things at the right time. I really believe that. And so and we're here to help facilitate that. So, yep. Um, so Meg oh, says, thank you. You, guys are you guys are great. great. Um, I think that she only says that because we booked her dog on an Amazon commercial and it was really, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, Meg, <laughs> you're awesome. We, we love you and your pup. Um, I love the lives. Keep them coming. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. We're, we're getting, we're getting better at it. Um, we're working through it. Mel, you, she should have Jenny on the next one and you know, whatever topics you guys want us to cover. Um, we're, I'm just going to start interviewing more and more people that work in the animal industry, just because we work with some really, really cool people and just be interviewing them and helping you guys grow your accounts and helping brands partner with you. Um, we love doing these. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. So appreciate it. And I hope you all have a great day. Mel, do you want to do a sign off too? Sure. Hey, everybody, you know, again, don't hesitate to reach out if you have questions. If you've applied for a couple campaigns and you haven't seen any you know, action there, feel free to email me or Colleen and we can have a chat. You know, we, we, again, we want everyone to be successful. So we're here to help. Do not hesitate to reach out. Have a wonderful holiday weekend. It's President's Day on Monday. Um, get lots of great content out and, you know, just keep checking back for more opportunities at Pets Like You. Oh, Ripley. Okay. Now, now it's better to put, put an account to the name. Oh, okay. I didn't know who Colleen Becker was, but that's, yep. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. So next time, I mean, when you apply for something, I mean, just let me know, like shoot me a message on Instagram and whatnot, and we'll, I'll see, and just let me know which account you have a question on. I'll, I'll log in and check that out for you. Um, especially on the next slide. That'd be great. Um, well, thank you guys so much. Have a good one. Bye. Thanks you guys.